Good morning. Ça va maintenant faire trois mois que notre économie est au ralenti. Comme l'ont montré les chiffres sur l'emploi vendredi, c'est une période extrêmement difficile pour tous les Canadiens. According to Stats Canada data, five and a half million people have lost their jobs or had their hours substantially reduced since February. Small businesses across the country have been forced to close their doors, and unfortunately, despite their best efforts, many will never reopen. While provinces are slowly easing health restrictions, we know that the road to recovery will be difficult and long. The Trudeau Liberals spent the cupboard bare when times were good and were unprepared when the pandemic hit. Pendant toute cette crise, les libéraux de Trudeau tardent à agir et leur échec à écouter les experts coûte cher aux Canadiens. Throughout this crisis, the Liberals have been slow to act and their decisions have cost Canadians. The Liberals kept our borders open even as other countries shut theirs. The government dumped medical supplies and never replaced them. Aid programs have been slow to roll out, meaning that by the time help finally arrives, it's too late for many small businesses. Trudeau promised that programs would be fixed as time went on, just like Bill Morneau promised that help for the energy sector would be coming in, quote, hours or days. Both have proven to be untrue. While speed might have been of the essence in March, we are now in May. And every day, Conservatives hear from entrepreneurs and workers who are falling through the cracks. Nous proposons des solutions constructives pour aider. Nous avons réussi à apporter des changements, par exemple, en augmentant la subvention salariale à 75% et en rendant le compte d'urgence pour les entreprises canadiennes plus flexible pour que plus de petites entreprises y aient accès, mais les libéraux ignorent les autres problèmes. We have proposed constructive solutions to help, and while we have been successful in making some changes, for example, raising the wage subsidy to 75%, overwhelmingly, the Liberals are ignoring the problems facing so many small and medium-sized business owners and the people who work there. Instead of listening and fixing the gaps in existing programs, Justin Trudeau is letting Canadians down. Self-employed or family-run businesses who receive dividends can't access the wage subsidy. Neither can seasonal businesses or project companies that receive lump sum payments. To fix these problems, Conservatives have proposed that the government change their eligib eligibility criteria so that struggling businesses don't have to lay off their workers. The Canada Emergency Business Account is supposed to help tide over businesses that have been hit hard by this crisis. But many small businesses do not qualify for the $40,000 loan simply because they use a checking account instead of a business account. Newer family-run businesses don't have $20,000 worth of payroll because they are putting everything back into the business or paying family members with dividends, so they don't qualify. If you pay contract workers, perhaps like a private gym, you also don't qualify. And if you rent space to other independent business owners like many hair salons, you don't qualify either. Now, to fix these problems, Conservatives have proposed removing the business account requirement and expanding the eligibility criteria to include revenue decline so more small businesses qualify for the $40,000 loan. Instead of helping, Justin Trudeau is letting down some of the smallest and hardest hit. In order to get rental relief, businesses need to have lost 70% of their revenue. This all or nothing threshold means that many businesses that have stayed open despite significant revenue loss will have to close entirely in order to get help. That doesn't make any sense. Conservatives have called on the government to fix this flaw, but the Liberals continue to ignore the problem and let entrepreneurs down. 
alors que les provinces assouplissent les restrictions sanitaires et que les entreprises tentent de réouvrir leurs portes, les programmes gouvernementaux ne devraient pas les en empêcher. Mais c'est pourtant le cas pour les restaurants et d'autres industries des services qui ne peuvent qu'offrir des cotes de travail réduites pendant des mois pour maintenir la destination physique. Les gens ne devraient pas être pénalisés parce qu'ils retournent travailler. C'est pourquoi les conservateurs pressent le gouvernement de rendre la prestation canadienne d'urgence plus généreuse et plus flexible pour que personne ne soit pénalisé. Nous proposons aussi un nouveau programme pour jumeler les étudiants et les jeunes avec les emplois dans le secteur agricole, ce qui comprend les poissons et fruits de mer, pour répondre aux pénuries de main dœuvre partout au pays. Well, we recognize the need to get help out the door quickly. The Liberals have created unnecessarily rigid programs that are leaving hundreds of thousands of people without help. Canadians are struggling. There are easy solutions to help. So why is Justin Trudeau letting you down? Our economic recovery depends on small businesses and workers being allowed to get ahead. Empty Liberal promises and repeated failures cannot be allowed to hold Canadians back. Thank you very much. Happy to take your questions. Nous allons maintenant passer à la période de questions. We'll start with three questions on the phone. Uh, uh, as usual, one question, one follow-up per reporter. Uh, operator, do we have our first question? Thank you, merci. Please press star one at this time if you have a question. S'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 maintenant pour poser une question. There will be a brief pause for the participants to register for questions. Il y aura un court délai. Vous permettez de vous enregistrer dans la file d'attente pour la période de questions. Thank you for your patience. Merci de patienter. La première question, the first question, is from Lee Bertium, Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Votre ligne est ouverte. Yes, Mr. Scheer. Thank you. Um, just wondering, uh, with regards to the meat packing plants, what you would do to uh, about the working conditions in those plants? Sorry, I'm having difficulty hearing. Is there any way we can turn the, the volume up? <laughs> Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay, sorry. Um, just wondering about the uh, the meat packing plants with the news about this, the Cargill uh, plant outside of Montreal yesterday. What uh, the Conservatives would like to see or would do about the uh, improving working conditions within those plants? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that we were calling on, uh, we have been calling on for weeks, is for the government to have a better program to uh, obtain personal protective equipment. We we flagged that not only is this necessary for frontline healthcare workers, but uh, for people in other industries as they return to work or as they continue to work, this uh, th these pieces of equipment need to be available. Uh, this is why we were so critical of the government's decision to dump millions of pieces of equipment uh, months before the pandemic hit with no plan to replenish them. Uh, so this is again something that uh, the federal government has uh, not been able to support provincial plans to, uh, to, to gradually lift restrictions and allow people to go back to work because of their failure uh, to obtain the necessary equipment. Uh, thanks for that. But, but what would you do about them right now? What would you do to improve the working conditions now? Mm. Well, obviously, it's very important that uh, workers feel uh, safe, that, uh, that uh, we, we place a very high priority on the, uh, the ability for workers to do their jobs safely. Uh, we also recognize that there are critical aspects of our society that need to be able to continue to in order, in order to make sure, in this case, that Canadians have uh, supply, have the ability to access food uh, in our uh, agro industry uh, supply chain. Uh, I believe that the, the federal government's, uh, you know, one of the areas that the federal government can do things to help is to make sure that we have enough PPE uh, to go around, that uh, as more and more segments of the economy come back online, uh, that the, uh, necessary, the necessary personal protective equipment uh, is there. Uh, so gaps that have been identified in our supply chain here, uh, the problems with, uh, with supplies sourced in China, the dumping of PPE just before the pandemic hit, uh, those are all examples of things that Conservatives would not have done, and therefore we would have been in a better position to meet this pandemic. Operator, next question. Thanks. Thank you. Merci. The next question, la prochaine question est de Catherine Lévesque, la presse canadienne. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Votre ligne est ouverte. 
Oui, bonjour, M. Scheer. J'aimerais tout d'abord revenir sur la prestation canadienne d'urgence. Vous dites qu'elle devrait être plus généreuse et plus flexible. Est-ce que vous pourriez détailler votre proposition ou est-ce que vous pensez que euh, qu'elle est logique avec le fait que vous avez dénoncé que la prestation canadienne d'urgence pour les étudiants, elle, était trop généreuse et était un désincitatif au travail. Donc, j'aimerais comprendre la logique aussi non, en, entre c est, c est, votre proposition. C'est pas une question d'être... Euh, notre critique, c'est pas que les, les programmes sont trop généreux. Notre critique, c'est que c'est trop rigide. Quelqu'un qui gagne euh, 999 dollars euh, a le droit d'obtenir le, le, le prestation complet. Quelqu'un qui gagne une mille et un dollar, perdre le, 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 bénéfice, le, le bénéfice entièrement. Il n'y a aucune logique pour pénaliser les gens qui, qui, qui peuvent travailler, qui peut-être une petite entreprise offre quelques heures, euh, quelques euh, opportunités pour travailler pendant un mois, et si quelqu'un gagne plus de, même une dollar, plus de mille dollars, il va perdre le, le, le programme entièrement. Ça, c'est trop rigide. Uh, trop inflexible. Uh, et nous avons souligné ce problème, que uh, ce n'est pas juste de pénaliser quelqu'un qui essaie de, 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 de retourner au travail. Uh, ce n'est pas juste de pénaliser <rire> les propriétaires des petites entreprises pour offrir les travailleurs quelques heures pendant un mois. Alors, notre position est que, est que le, le gouvernement doit uh, uh, assurer que ce programme est plus flexible pour permettre plus de gens de, de, de travailler sans perdre leur, euh, le, le, le programme entièrement. Un suivi, Catherine? Oui, merci. Mais pouvez-vous nous décrire comment est-ce que ça devrait être plus flexible? Mais il y a beaucoup d'options que le gouvernement peut presser, peut, peut étudier. Il y a des autres exemples avec les autres programmes qui, euh, qui permettent les, les gens d'obtenir le bénéfice même euh, en, en retournant euh, de travail. Il y a, il y a beaucoup d'options sur la table. Nous avons souligné le problème. Ce n'est pas juste de quelqu'un qui, qui gagne une dollar plus de mille dollars de perdre le, le programme entièrement. Ça, c'est n'est pas juste. Ça, c'est pas... Il n'aide pas les Canadiens et ça, ça, cet aspect du programme aussi va nuire les uh, petites entreprises de réouvrir. Operator, next question. Thank you. Merci. The next question, la prochaine question est de Andrew Layton from True North. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Votre ligne est ouverte. Good morning, Mr. Shear. We learned on the weekend that Canada is backing the uh, movement to have Taiwan as a, an observer, non-state observer in the World Health Organization. I'm curious what you think uh, Canada's relationship with uh, Taiwan should be. If you were Prime Minister, what sort of relationship would you foster? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, obviously Canada ha enjoys a very uh, uh, um, uh, beneficial uh, relationship with Taiwan. We, we trade uh, goods and services back and forth between the two countries, benefiting both uh, Taiwan and Canada. Uh, conservatives have long called for Taiwan to be allowed to participate in organizations like the WHO and the Civil Aviation Authority, these types of uh, entities which provide uh, guidance and services to, uh, to, to uh, focus on the health and safety of uh, people all around the world should should not be impacted by global politics and by the foreign policy positions of uh, of the PRC uh, so we would be very supportive of Taiwan's participation in these types of organizations as a follow or an unrelated uh, second question on this uh, we learned that right now a pro-life uh, activist group is uh, being investigated by the commissioner of Canada elections after connecting volunteers with uh, close to 50 pro-life candidates in the last election, all conservatives. I was wondering what your response to that is. Well, I think it's, uh, it's obviously very concerning. Anytime uh, grassroots organizations who, who support particular positions or candidates are, are uh, if, obviously we're very concerned about any type of, uh, of negative signal that sends to people who are trying to be engaged in the, in the electoral process and volunteering in elections campaigns. I would be curious to know whether or not Elections Canada is also going to investigate Unifor, a large union 
which specifically targeted defeating conservatives, uh, whether or not they are going to be investigating other groups like Lead Now and other uh, uh, groups who have made their uh, priority very well known, their express purpose of their, of their activities to defeat conservatives and elect liberals. So uh, I, I look forward to Elections Canada uh, showing that kind of uh, fairness and, uh, and uh, applying the same logic to, 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 to all groups. We'll now take questions from the room. Yes, good morning, uh, Mr. Shear. Noah Richardson uh, from CTV National News. Um, I just wanted to, to ask you about the Canada-U.S. border. Um, early on when this pandemic uh, began to hit Canada, you were critical of the government for being slow to act in closing the border. So first of all, I, I want to ask you, when specifically do you think the government should have moved to close the border? And secondly, um, as some provinces start to gradually reopen their economies, do you believe the border uh, between Canada and the United States should continue to be closed and for how long? Well, uh, I, I, I believe that the government missed an opportunity to protect Canadians when they refused to limit travel restrictions, sorry, to impose travel r restrictions and to uh, close our borders. Uh, there were military intelligence reports as early as January uh, recommending that the government do precisely that. Uh, the Liberals ignored that. We saw other countries uh, closer to China uh, impacted earlier take those types of measures and still this government refused to do that. So certainly uh, back in, in January and February there was ample uh, evidence provided to the government to make those types of decisions. The government waited until mid-March to do so. So we lost precious days and weeks in the fight against this virus. Uh, as it relates to going forward, uh, obviously the border uh, still permits, the, the rules around the border still permit for important goods and services to go back and forth. That's incredibly essential. We have such an integrated supply chain, uh, everything from groceries to hardware to everything imaginable that goes back and forth across the border uh, many times. Uh, it's, in, it's essential that we're able to preserve that. As it relates to individuals visiting and, and travel for personal reasons, obviously that those are decisions that must be made uh, dependent on where we're at getting ahead of our curve here. Uh, so uh, right now we're focused today on the gaps in the government's programs, the fact that they are letting so many people down that uh, we're urging the government before they start thinking about uh, things like that to fix the programs that they've already designed. Um. As a, as a follow-up, I, I wanted to ask you ab about uh, government uh, support for workers and in, in businesses. Virtually uh, every day since mid-March, the Prime Minister has, has been out announcing support for workers and businesses, the uh, emergency response benefit, the wage subsidy today, uh, support for uh, large businesses, there's support for agriculture, arts and culture. Yet today, again, you continue to say that the government is failing Canadians. So um, I want to ask you specifically how much much more money should the government be spending um, to support workers and businesses? And I, I'm asking for a number here. How much? Well, you, you are right. The, mm -hmm. the Prime Minister daily makes announcements. Uh, what we're saying is that if you look behind the announcement and just beyond the photo op in front of uh, Rideau Cottage, and you look at the details that this government is letting people down. They are often in the in the habit of uh, making announcements without details, with uh, with no substance, with creating confusion. For example, this morning's announcement: it's not clear uh, uh, who who is the lender. It's not clear whether or not companies have to uh, demonstrate revenue loss. It's not clear what the terms of the loans may be. Are these loans? Are these loan guarantees? Is this will this allow the government to take equity positions? Uh, none of the none of these details are available today, but the government goes ahead and makes the announcement. We've identified some very specific barriers to small and medium-sized businesses from getting the help they need. For example, uh, small business owners who use a personal checking account rather than a business account are ineligible just because of that one technicality. Uh, owner operators, family businesses that pay relatives through dividends, ineligible for this kind of help. So for for our purposes, we're saying get rid of these these very technical measures in these programs to allow for more Canadians, more businesses to be able to survive during this pandemic. That's the focus of our uh, of our message today. 
Mr. Shear, Julie Van Dusen, CBC. Um, I remember at one point you were concerned the government would make decisions about the oil sector based on ideological reasons. Their announcement today seems to make money available for this bridge financing for the energy sector. Are you satisfied with that? Well, I guess that my question for Mr. Morneau is, is this the package that he's promised the oil and gas sector? Uh, because if this is it, this is certainly not what was uh, promised nor what was expected. Uh, as I said, there are so many details that are missing f uh, from uh, this announcement this morning. Mr. Morneau promised a ind an industry-specific package to the oil and gas sector that would uh, address the very, very unique set of circumstances and the very specific challenges that that sector uh, is facing. Uh, so, uh, you know, you know, if we were having if we're having question period, if we're having regular accountability sessions in the House of Commons, that would be my question for Mr. Barno is, is this it? Mm -hmm. Last week, when the Prime Minister was asked to comment on some of the remarks made by other opposition leaders, uh, including the Green Party and the Bloc Québécois, about uh, oil being dead, he certainly backed away from that. Um, are you seeing any of this as, as, as a positive sign, though? Well, uh, well, first of all, uh, as it relates to the remarks from uh, from last week, I, I think it is uh, an insult to the hundreds of thousands of people who uh, have lost their job because of the downturn uh, in uh, the oil and gas sector. Many many factors leading to that downturn were caused by this government. Uh, the c decision to cancel pipelines, the decision to impose a carbon tax, uh, resulted in so m much hardship in the oil and gas sector. It also ignores the very real benefit that the oil and gas sector provides to literally every single human being. The, 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 the wonders of modern technology, the ability to get fresh fruits and vegetables in the winter, the ability to heat our homes, the, the, the benefits that the oil and gas sector provides to the world, uh, those comments completely ignored that. It also ignores the contribution that Canada makes and that our oil and gas sector makes to making the world a better place. When a barrel of oil is taken out of the ground in Canada, it benefits Canadians. It's taken out of the ground at the highest environmental standards, the highest labor standards. Contrasting that to oil taken out of the ground in regimes that abuse human rights, that f fund international terrorist organizations. So again, uh, I'm always baffled at why there are some in Canada who want to talk down our oil and gas sector when it has been such a fountain of hope and opportunity and benefits to not only Canadians but people from all around the world. We have time for one more question on the phone. Operator, could you pass through the question, please? Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question est de Joël Denis Bellavance. Next question, Joël Denis Bellavance from La Paresse. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Votre ligne est ouverte. Oui, bonjour, M. Scheer. Euh, merci de prendre nos questions. Euh, je voulais savoir, le, la frontière doit, en principe, euh, la frontière canadienne-américaine doit, en principe, rouvrir le 21 mai. Croyez-vous qu'il est dans l'intérêt des Canadiens que l'on rouvre à nouveau les frontières à tous les voyageurs, y compris les voyageurs non essentiels? Mais euh, le gouvernement doit, doit assurer les Canadiens que euh, notre, nos systèmes de santé sont capables à, à répondre à une augmentation des cas li avec, si, si, euh, liés avec les, euh, les, euh, les visiteurs internationaux. Alors, ça sera une décision très, très, très importante et doit être basée sur les, euh, les, les faits, le, la, la réalité dont les États-Unis et aussi ici au Canada. Je vous donne euh, l'exemple. La, la raison pour laquelle je vous pose la question, c'est que ouais, à Montréal, par exemple, qui est euh, l'épicentre de, de, de l'épidémie au Canada, euh, le premier ministre du Québec a prolongé euh, aux 25 000 l'ouverture de Montréal. Il s'espérait que ce soit de nouveau repoussé, alors qu'en principe, la frontière doit ouvrir entre le Canada et les États-Unis le 21 mai. D'où euh, ma question, est-ce que c'est dans l'intérêt d'ouvrir maintenant ou devrait-on attendre ou même prolonger à nouveau euh, l'ouverture de la frontière au 21 juin, par exemple, à un autre mois de plus. Mm. Alors, euh, encore, ça, ça, ça doit être une décision euh, euh, basée sur les faits, basée sur la réalité, basée sur la, la capacité de nos systèmes de, de la santé en négociation avec les États-Unis. Euh, C'est clair qu'il euh, y a beaucoup, euh, un, un grand nombre de cas dans, aux États-Unis et, et les nombres de cas augmentent. Euh, nous devons être 
sûr que, on peut, euh, que nos systèmes de santé sont capables à, à, à gérer. Alors, pour le moment, ici, nous, euh, nous, nous, euh, nous appelons sur le gouvernement d'être de, de, sûr de, de, de baser leurs décisions sur les faits. C'est un peu plus tôt pour, pour moi de, de, de commenter si le 21 mai, c'est le propre jour ou non. On doit, être, euh, on doit baser ces décisions sur la réalité actuelle. This concludes your press conference. Il m'a fait notre conférence de presse. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Thanks very much. Merci.